Peace. Please. Uh, I appreciate you all for checking in. I'm grateful to have you, you know, walking this journey with me, man. You know, you all are more encouraging than you really understand. Um, and I say that honestly. And for those that may be outside, out here in this world uh, of freedom, I pray that you are truly free, you know, in your spirit, in your heart, uh, because we can be imprisoned out here. We can be in relationships that have us imprisoned. We can be in uh, situations that have us imprisoned. You know, we can be in debt and your mind is a prisoner to that debt because all day you're thinking of ways to come out that debt. You're a slave to it because you're working towards and for it when you shouldn't have to, but that is the way it is. You can be in a relationship where you're giving your all, you're giving your all, but you're only being used and you know it, you see it, you feel it, but it's so hard for you to detach yourself from the relationship. You know, you giving 90%, you only giving 10 back. You know, you sitting in, the, you going to work every day, you come home, your man on the couch. You know, he got PlayStation in his hand. Um, he borrowing your car and it's coming back to tank on E, you know, or, you know, you cooking his favorite foods. He won't even bring you a snicker, you know, from the store. So, you know, and then you got some guys who are giving their all, you know, and, and, and you know, some of their ladies aren't as invested, you know, uh, which is not the majority of the case, you know, and we know that. But for those who are free, you know, then that is a blessing because there's a, 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 a beauty and a wonder in that. But those who are not free, and I'm talking about in the mind or in the heart, work hard for that. Work hard for it. You are worthy of it, right? We are worthy of that. You know, we're, 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 we're creations of the Most High. And according to the Bible and the Quran, the greatest creations. I mean, we look at the sun like this is glorious. And yet in both books, God placed special emphasis on man, you know? So I'm just saying, you know, know your worth, like honestly, know your worth. And if you're watching this and you're sitting in a cell or you're watching this and you're sitting in a pod, you're sitting in a, a classroom in prison, a jail or a detention center, again, know your worth. Know that you sit in that seat. Not your homeboy beside you that's whispering and snickering. Not the homegirl beside you telling you don't pay dude no mind. You know, look at this and what we going to do later. No, 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 no. You sit in that seat. And so when you sit in that seat, you should be thinking about how can you make your life better? How can I go right? Because I keep making left turns. How can I start going right? You know, maybe that means me picking up more books. Maybe that means me... Um, you know, staying away from the crew more, not hanging out in the hood as much, not sitting over there gossiping as much. Maybe I need to focus on me, you know, come up with a list of goals. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? And how can I go about bringing those goals into fruition? Because what happens is, and I did it myself, we're too worried about everybody else's opinion of us. You know, the, the foolish people, not even the the people that care about us, you know, your mother's care, your father's care, your grandmother's care, your family usually cares. So when they say, go, go to school, go to school, get that education, get that education. Because with the education, you're, you're, you're in many ways better off. You know, you have more options. If you can read, you have options. If you know mathematics, then you have options. You can be an accountant just knowing math. You know, you can get a job just knowing how to read and write. You got people out here who are illiterate. And they're working on the strength of their skills, their labor skills. But when you read or write and you have that added on to maybe your ability to move things and do things, then you have an extra, you know, a uh, 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 leg up, as they say. So if you're sitting in a cell or you're sitting in a prison, you're sitting in a detention home, I feel for you because I was there. And I know how it feels to stand and walk alone. I do. I don't like crowds. I don't like being around a whole lot of people if I can help it. Even out here on this street, outside of family, and I love my family. Um, and those that know me can attest it. I love my family. Whether we getting along all the time or not, I love them with my heart. I got, man, just a couple of us. I got a few close acquaintances and one real friend, man, my brother, you know, um, those watching, you know, it's my brother Roy, man. And like, that's my brother, man. That's my friend, you know, for 
26, 7, 8 years. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really deal with a lot of people. I have a lot of acquaintances. I have a lot of people that I got love for. And I'm out. I'm not close, you know. Um, and I have a couple of other friends, you know what I mean? Brothers that are in other places, Portsmouth, uh, Richmond, you know what I mean? They're, they're scattered, you know, and so I'm not in close proximity to these brothers, New York, uh, uh, in peace to those soldiers that may be watching, man, that, you know, that know me and, uh, you know, have always stood, you know, uh, firm beside me. I appreciate you and I love you to death. Um, and a lot of brothers are coming home, man. I know some guys, man, and like I say, I promise you, some of these will be interviews, you know, as soon as I can get around a couple of them, man, you know, some of them are poets, some of them do the spoken words, some of them are rappers, some of them are extraordinary fathers and they did this time. So it's going to be a lot more to this page than you all seeing me, but I wanted to establish a foundation. I wanted to show you all, you know, that what's behind there, unless you're defending something you love or your personal bodily harm, man, it's not worth going in there. You go in there and you can't wait to get out. I told you before, an old head told me this, and I promise I'm not going to keep this one long. An old head told me this. It takes a second to get locked up and a lifetime to get out. I'm going to show you all something. You see, because when I did my time and was doing my time, I understood the severity of my case, right? Like I said, I shot a couple people, you know, and God forgive me for that. And I'm still, I still wrestle with it, right? Um, because when I see crime today, when I see it, I'm like, man, how stupid is that? How they killing little kids? How they shooting girls? How they shooting each other? What's wrong with them? And then I kick myself in the butt like, man, you was out here doing the same. You was out. You had a pistol. You was out here fighting. You was going to go-go's. You was going to clubs. You was selling drugs. Who are you to judge? Right? So I'm not judging. I make judgments. I'm not judging. Because I don't know they tell. I don't know what's going on in their homes. Now, I know some things are just super stupid. Ain't a whole lot to that. I'm not going to make excuses for the mistakes I made either, despite how my upbringing and how dysfunctional that stuff was. Nah, nah. Remember what I said. PTSD is real in the hood. It's real. It's real in many house homes, right? Many households, excuse me. Um, so again, you get locked up, right? And you want to get home as soon as you get locked up. But many people don't work to get home. But there are those, man, that got locked up, crimes, heinous, some, some crimes, stealing cars, you know, robbing stores. Okay. You can't wait to get home. They have a process called parole. Parole is your opportunity to go home. That is when a board sits and they listen to you or an interviewer listens to you and they assess the person you are versus the crime you committed or who you were at that time. And when they assess it, they have your case in front of them. So if you were shooting people or shoot a person or you robbing people, or you stabbed a person, then they see all that. And so then they're going to look at your prison record. They're going to say, um, okay, I see you have your GED. That's good. I see you have a job. You've been working for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. That's good. You've been in all these programs, thinking for a change, breaking barriers, house of learning. You know what I mean? You've been house of healing. You've been in every religious program. You're a Muslim. Okay. All right. You're a Christian. Say it's right here. You're active. You know, you're Jehovah's Witness. You're, you know what I mean? Uh, a Hebrew Israelite. You're all the, you, you've done all this. Okay. Then they're going to ask you, what makes you different? So that's your opportunity to give your spiel. And I've grown. I realized the mistakes that I made, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Usually first time, they're going to turn you down. Again, depending on your case. Second time, they're usually going to turn you down. Third time, they're going to turn you down. Every time you go up from the first to the last, okay, how many times is you have hope? You have hope, right? Because in your mind, you know you. So either you think that you've really grown and you're ready to go home, uh, or you really have grown. You've been put in a situation where you didn't let them go. Man, I ain't worried about that. You know, you walk off from a fight after, you know, walk away from a situation that could have been a fight where at one time you would have immediately jump down somebody's throat, right? Um, you know, you talk differently to authority. They tell you something, you don't get all mad and get the bucket in their face with it. Nah, you really listen, right? So you've grown and you know it, but they don't know it. And in their mind, you might not have done enough time, you know? So you hope. And what happens is once you are getting up, like this is the conversation with inmates, man, what quarter you go up? I go up, man, next week. Oh, for real? Oh, man, what you think? 
man, I think I'm gonna make it, man. I mean, I done done everything they asked me to do. Oh yeah, yeah, no doubt. You Jay, you you stay busy, you stay in the program or something. All right, that's what's up, man. Good luck, soldier. And you get over there, it's usually you and about 10, 15 other guys. You sit there, you're nervous. You didn't put on your shirt. You didn't iron your shirt because you think that that appearance means something. You might have your shirts ironed on a regular, but you iron your shirt and you sit over there, you're sitting up and you're thinking of what to say. And you you hoping because you didn't told your people too. You went up for parole, you know, and they like, they didn't wrote letters for you, you know, and they like, yeah, you know, I wrote the parole board for you. I got your cousin. I got your uncle. I got your aunt. You know what I'm saying? We got the church. We got the moms. We got people backing you. You know what I mean? You ready. You got a job lined up. Um, so you sitting there. So, you know, somebody come out. Hey, how I sound? How, how I feel? That dude seem all right though, man. Dude, like he's smiling and laughing, man. Hey, man, shoot. You know, all right, they give you that and they walk out. Okay. So among the circle, you know, among the guys sitting on the benches, y'all sitting there trying to keep the voice down so y'all don't disturb what's going on in there. But you like, hey, how long you been down? 10? What you got? 35? Oh yeah, first time? Nah, I went up like three times so far, right? They turned me down. Oh yeah? Ah, what you feel? I feel good this time. You know, all right. You look at another dude, what you got, man? I got life. How long you been down? I've been down 17. Oh yeah, how long? How many times you got turned down? About four. Shh, man, man, I ain't did but ten. Oh man, they turn you down. Seventeen. I got life too. I mean, but it's changing though. You know what I'm saying? Hey, don't worry about it, soldier. Though you know what I'm saying? You I, you I. Okay, okay. Then you go in there. The parole interviewer, parole. They get the typing. Okay, says here, and they run through that spiel, ask you questions. You come out of there and you waiting. You waiting. And when you wait. About three, four days go past, and you get this. Right? Hard to read. So this was in 2017. This was, Dear colleague Kareem, the Virginia Parole Board recently reviewed your case for potential release on discretionary parole. As you know, the goal of the parole board is to release on parole those eligible offenders deemed suitable for release and whose release will be compatible with the welfare of society and the offender. The board, in determining whether you should be released on parole, consider a number of factors, and they go into that, and they go into, you know, the factors, um, including but not limited to whether your release would be compatible with the safety of society, the mutual interests of society, and you, whether your character, conduct, and vocational training and other development activities, uh, developmental activities during incarceration reflect the pop probability that you will lead a law-abiding life in the community and live up to all conditions of parole if released. Sentencing information, facts, and circumstances of your offenses, including uh, mitigating and uh, aggravating factors. Uh, prior criminal history and inf information regarding an adjustment to previous probation and parole, if any personal history, institutional adjustment, such as your response to available programs, change in attitude towards self and others, release plans, evaluations, um, impressions gained when interviewed by the parole examiner, and any other information provided by your attorney, family, victims, or other persons, right? So it says, in accordance with Virginia Code Section 53, 1-155 in correspondence of the factors listed above, and the information uh, available to us, the Virginia Parole Board's decision to not grant parole September 4th, 2017, right? So when you get that, that's a blow. This sister that used to come visit us from Virginia State, a strong sister, man, she used to come visit the prison system, man, and give us so much, you know, knowledge, right? So this is the reasons why they turn you down. One was release at this time would diminish the seriousness of the crime. And that was 2017. I'd already done 20, 21 years. 23 years. Serious nature and circumstance of your offense. The nature of your crime would never change. You commit a murder, that's always murder. The nature of your crime never changes. So that was a grievance that people in the Virginia system had and started, you know, filing class action lawsuits and writing everybody they could because that's something that was thrown at us every turn down. The board concludes that you should serve more of your sentence prior to release on parole and fourth, extensive criminal record. 
That is a lie. But this was a this was my first adult case. I've been locked up as a juvenile for uh, grand larceny, burglary tools, felonious assault, and uh, malicious wounding. You know, and that that came from fighting and stuff, right? That was one. Another turn down, right? Turn down. Turn down. Appeal paper. Turn down. And they give you a chance to appeal. But what happened was guys kept appealing so much, just saying the same thing. Serious nature crime, that doesn't make sense. Da -da 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 -da. They stopped allowing you to use that. They said the only way you could appeal was if you turn around and you had a new case, right? Turn down. Right. Turn down. All right. So, I had a lot of turn downs, you know. I had a lot of turn downs. But, like I say, I earned it, you know. I earned it, you know. I harm people. And in my case, somebody won't come back. So, you know. I earned it, you know, and um, that's a weight, you know, that I have to live with on the regular, but I have, I have more turned down. Like I said, they turned me down a lot, <laughs> you know, 11, about, I think about 11 times and every time, um, and every time, you know, it was just as weighty, you know, it was just as weighty and, um, you know, but I'll touch on that another day. I just want us to, I just want people to realize that I learned the value of life. You know, I learned a lot. And because I learned a lot, I'm grateful for a lot. Um, and I try to express that to people. I try to say thank you a lot. When I say I appreciate you, it's from the heart. It's no fluff. It's no flair. So for those watching, I appreciate you. Check me out, Instagram. Uh, check me out, you know, on um, Facebook. Check out my endeavors. Check out my aims and my efforts. And, uh, you know, like I said, I appreciate you all, man, and your uh, contribution to this journey you know have a good day strive hard to make life better for you and those you love and uh, believe in yourself right you know don't turn yourself down <laughs> don't, you know parole do it right people will but don't turn yourself down you know again thank you peace